Hello, first grade friends. In this video, we are going to finish up module 13.5, practice facts to 20 on page 406, 406. This is the second part of the on your own section. For these problems, we are going to add or subtract to solve. Let's start with number 13. There are 12 shirts in a bag. Some are blue and some are red. If eight shirts are blue, how many shirts are red? We can show this problem in two different ways. Let's start by showing it through subtraction. What I'll do first is I'll draw how many shirts I know there are all together. We know that there are 12 shirts in the bag, so we'll draw 12 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We know that some are blue and some are red. Then they tell us that eight shirts are blue. So we can subtract eight from twelve to find how many red shirts there are. Let's go ahead and cross off eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That leaves us with four ones. Another way to solve this problem is through addition. We can count on to see how many shirts are red. For this, we'll start by drawing eight circles since we know that eight of them are blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we can count on until we get to 12. I'll show this by drawing open circles. So we have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that gives me a total of four. So we know that there are four red shirts in the bag. Let's look at number 14. Number 14 says, Coach Jane has 10 baseball mitts and eight softball mitts. How many mitts does she have? We know that there are 10 baseball mitts and eight softball mitts. We can show this by adding 10 plus eight. Since this number eight is just one number in the ones place and there's a zero in the ones place here, we can put the eight in the ones place in the answer and we add a group of 10. So all together, Coach Jane has 18 mitts. Let's take a look at number 15. There are 14 bowling balls on the rack. Six balls are taken off the rack. How many bowling balls are on the rack now? Explain. There are two different ways that we can solve this problem. Just like number 13, we can add or subtract to find our answer. This time, let's start with addition. We know that six balls are taken off the rack. So, I will draw six ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. We know that there are 14 all together. So let's count on until we get to the number 14. We have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We just added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight circles for a total of 14. Using this picture, we can then subtract 
to find how many balls were taken or how many balls were taken and how many are left. Altogether, we have 14. Six are taken away. So we can subtract six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that leaves us with eight. So we know that there are eight bowling balls still on the rack. Next, they want us to explain. We can say that we either started with 14 bowling balls and subtracted six to give us eight, or we can talk about how we counted on to find the number. Let's go ahead and write our explanation about subtraction. We started with 14 bowling balls. We subtracted six to give us eight. Let's take a look at the bottom problems. For 16 through 24, they want you to either add or subtract. Think about the different addition and subtraction strategies that we've learned to help you do these problems. For number 16, we can make a 10. I know that I need two more numbers to reach the number 10. So, I'm going to borrow two from seven and make this a 10. If I take two away from seven, that leaves me with five. I know that five plus 10 equals 15. So seven plus eight also equals 15. Let's do the same for number 17. I can make a 10 by borrowing some from my number 5. If I take 2 away from 5, I'm left with the number 3. We know that 10 plus 13, or 10 plus 3 equals 13. So 13 equals 8 plus 5. Let's take a look at number 18. Remember our fact families. What number plus 7 equals 13? 6 plus 7 equals 13. So I know that 6 equals 13 minus 7. Let's look at number 19. I know that if I add 3 to the number 7, it will give me 10. So I can use my fact family knowledge and say that three equals 10 minus nine. For number 20, we can practice our make a 10 strategy. I'll borrow one number from five, which makes it four, and I'll bring that one next door to make it 10. And we know that 4 plus 10 equals 14. Next, we have 9 minus 2. If I start with 9 and take away 2, 1, 2, it leaves me with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 9 minus 2 equals 7. For number 22, let's draw a picture to help us solve. We have 11 minus 8. Let's go ahead and draw 11 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Now we'll cross out 8 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight. That leaves me with three ones. So 11 minus eight equals three. 
For number 23, we are going to add 5 plus 2. If I have 5 and I add 2 more, I can count on 5, 6, 7. So 5 plus 2 equals 7. Last, we have 7 plus 3. We can use number 19 to help us. We talked about that 3, 10, and 7 are all part of a fact family. So I know that 7 plus 3 equals 10. All right, first grade. That is all the work that we are going to do together for today. On your own, I would like for you to complete the practice and homework journal page P155 and P156. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or message me on Class Dojo. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.